Yes. Challenge free Pac-Man to make it move and eat the food. We can definitely do that challenge as well. Hey, Alicia. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you? This is Bailey and Jasper. They're sitting in again today. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, so, Bailey, Jasper, what could I do to make this really fun for you? Um, I think, well, I don't really know because it's kind of already perfect. Oh, well, that's do, nice. I want to kind of do, like, a, a project together. Ooh, that would be fun. We could totally do a project together. You mean, like, as a group? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that that would be fun. We could definitely do the project as a group together. I think that there's been a request to do Challenge 3 of the Pac-Man to make it move and eat food. And so I think if we do Pac-Man and we do a whole bunch of challenges, we can try and make Pac-Man um, as good as we can in, uh, in, in 35 minutes. And there's a request, a request also for, for questions um, at uh, near the end. So I think we're going to go only 45 minutes, so we're going to make it a little shorter, or maybe even tw 35 minutes. And after 25 minutes, we're going to open the floor to questions so that people can, can ask their questions. Um, yeah, and I think that that'll be really fun because Pac-Man is a fun challenge and we can try and figure out how to make it um, eat food and, uh, and make it work. Um, okay, so there we go. Okay, so I'm just trying to see how we have. Awesome. We have a whole bunch of people that are on board. I think what we're going to do, because it's almost 10 a.m., is we're just going to get started, and I'm going to share my screen again, but this time we're going to do Pac-Man, and we're going to make it really fun, and after 25 minutes, uh, we're going to um, open it up for questions so people can um, ask the questions that they have. So here we go. This is should be the... Um, um, can you guys see the hatch screen? Someone say yes or, or chat? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So we're going to do Pac-Man Chomp, and we're gonna, going to um, figure it out. And, oh, there's a Pac-Man Chomp Advanced. Using the create a more functional version of Pac-Man. Let's do Pac-Man Chomp uh, uh, Advanced together, and we're just going to do it, like, bit by bit. So it says create a Pac-Man that moves when – the keys are pressed and dots that randomly appear and can eat dots that randomly appear on the screen. So when we break it down, this is a huge project. This is 11 components. Look at this. There's so many components here. So we're just going to go through them one by one because one of the things that we do when we, when we learn how to code is we break big problems down into smaller problems. So if you are going to, um, if you're going to go build a big project, you're going to basically say, okay, how can we split it up into like lots of different components? So this is going to be what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, we're going to just create a, a chomping Pac-Man animation. We're going to start with number two over here. We're going to break this down and we're going to actually try to do this in pseudocode so that we can learn a little bit. So the first thing is we're going to have to create the background color. And I don't know how this is going to go. We're going to see how far we get, okay? So background, uh, we're just going to call this background black because black seems to be like a good color. Is black a good color? Do you guys want a different color? Do you guys want like a dark, a dark blue? No, black's good. Black's good, okay. Yeah, black's good. Awesome. The next thing is we're going to want a fill color of a Pac-Man. And if we go... Uh, yellow that, that that'd be i think like this so that's 255 250 is yellow a good color for the pac-man yep, yeah that's good okay because uh otherwise i was going to do rainbow sparkly unicorn but we'll go with uh we'll go with um with, with yellow for now then there's assign pac mouth the value of 360 minus pac mouth so we're going to create this variable called pac mouth and because we're doing it, we actually have to declare the variable at the top. So we're going to say var pack mouth um, close uh, equals, we're going to start at just zero. So we have, and then over here it says that we need to assign it the value of pack mouth close equals 360 minus 
packed mouth. And so whenever you see this, this word assign over here, that means that we're going to use the word equal. And packed mouth closes the variable. And the value is just a mathematical expression. It literally is whatever you see over here. I, I don't think I can uh, copy and paste. But whatever you see over here, we're just going to type over here. Pack, ooh, pack mouth. And when I do this, it's going to give me this thing. Pack mouth is not defined. So we're going to have to go up here. And we're going to have to go pack mouth. And I'm going to just uh, give it a value of zero because I don't know what value it's supposed to be, but I have to define it something. So then we draw an arc and an arc is like a part of a circle. So if you draw the whole circle, it's round, but an arc is going to be like part of a circle. And I think we can actually, I maybe we can uh, look this up. I hope that we can look this up. Shapes, ellipse, arc. Yeah, we can look this up over here and we see that the arc shows that there's the X and the Y position and how big the arc is and the starting and the ending angle, which is kind of how we're gonna create our pack mouth, right? Our pack mouth, this is almost like a Pac-Man that's like eating up and to the left a little bit. And so this starts at 270, goes away to, to 540. So we're gonna to have to figure that out. So let's go back here and we're going to go over here. Uh, we're gonna say arc um, uh, 200, comma 200 and then 80 comma 80 and it says from angles pack mouth uh, to pack mouth close so this is really interesting because instead of using a number for the for the for the angle over here we're using a number which is 540 or 270 um, instead of doing that we're actually going to use a variable and a variable is just like a number that can change right so like you know if I give you guys like a bowl of cookies and there's 10 cookies in there, I could say num cookies equals 10. And I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. And if I gave this, this box of cookie, this, this bowl of cookies to my three-year-old, the first thing he'd do is he'd eat a cookie. And then num cookies would go down from 10 to nine. The, the, the amount of num cookies would change. Do you know why? Because of a very hungry three-year-old who just loves to eat cookies. Do any of you love to eat cookies? Yeah? yeah. Okay. So if I gave you a bowl of cookies, num cookies would probably go down from 10 to nine to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yes. And then it'd be like only one more cookie left. And then if there were two people in the room, you guys would fight over the cookie. So that's what a variable is. It's, it, it's a number that can change over time. And look, here we have our pack mouth and we could actually go to pack mouth. And I bet you, if we change it, uh, we can actually change the pack mouth. Oh, that's a weird pack mouth. But that's a really nice pack mouth, and we can make it maybe even a little bit bigger, like this. And now it's opening up even more. And now it's opening up even more. And now it's opening up and open more. Uh, and now it's opening up way too much. That's way too much. Okay, we're gonna we're just gonna make it. We're gonna start it at around there because that kind of looks like a pack man. Um. So we've created the pack man. Oh, and now it says, if, and whenever you see an if, it's always an if in an open bracket. We're gonna go pack mouth. Uh, is greater or equal to, and greater than equal to is this little triangle thingy, um, and, and greater means that the, the mouth of the triangle is pointing to the left, is equal to uh, 45, or, and or is a really weird character. It's above the enter key, and it has these two, like, straight lines, and you have to go shift and right above the enter key, there's a weird symbol that kind of looks like that. And you have to put two of them because that's how the computer understands the word or. And then we're gonna go pack mouth um, is less than or equal to uh, zero. Um, and if that happens, we're going to multiply chomp speed, chomp speed uh, equals chomp speed, um, uh, times minus one. So we're about to get a Pac-Man here. I can feel it. The only problem is we don't actually have a value for chomp speed. So we're going to go var chomp speed uh, equals how fast do we want to, to move? Let's start at five and let's see what happens. Um, and then increment pack mouth by chomp speed. So we're going to go pack mouth equals pack, oops, equals pack mouth uh, plus chomp speed. And now what we're doing is we're basically saying we have two different types of variables. So this is like having a bowl of cookies 
and there's some chocolate chip cookies in there, and there's some oatmeal cookies. And we're basically saying the number of chocolate chip cookies should be increased by the number of oatmeal cookies. Just like a, a wave kind of, or let's say we had two bowls, one with, uh, one with um, chocolate cookies and one with oatmeal cookies. Um, if you hear any noises in the background, that's my five-year-old Karadoc joining. <laughs> and Karadoc, do you, like, do you like chocolate chip cookies? If I get, <laughs> no, you have to use full, like you like hatch too? Yes. Awesome. Well, I'm going to keep teaching and you're going to see the Pac-Man show up if you watch this happen. So here we have this. And now all of this is great, except for, for this to happen, we're actually going to, oh, this is a, a defined function. So we're going to go bar Pac-Man chomp equals function, open bracket, close bracket, curly bracket. And all this is that we did right here is this is basically just how to make uh, Pac-Mouth work, uh, any function work. And now we have this Pac-Man chomp function, but then we have to call it. So we go Pac-Man chomp. Um, and we're just figuring out how to do this together. And so now it draws it once. And now we're going to use this function called draw. How many guys have, have seen the draw function um, in Hatch? Has anybody seen the draw function in Hatch? Yeah, we have. Yeah. I have because yeah. I do it in Hatch. So the var draw function Hatch, it animates the screen. So when I put this curly bracket right here, I'm going to need a semicolon. We're going to see the Pac-Man ready to chomp. Are you guys ready to see that? Let's see if it works. It's chomping, and we can slow. Daddy, daddy, a million, a million, I want a million. Okay, so this is a slow chomping Pac-Man. This is a really slow chomping Pac-Man. This is a really slow chomping Pac-Man. But we can also speed it up, and we can say, boop, 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 boop. now the Pac-Man's chomping all over the place. Oh my God, that is amazing. Okay. A million, a million. Okay, so that's actually pretty fast. We're gonna... I'll give you a million, a million. So, Kira, you have to let me teach this class. Could you please go upstairs? <laughs> so we have this Pac-Man chomping, and it's chomping at a pretty good uh, rate. I'm just going to, like, slow it down just a little bit for now. And we're going to build the, uh, the, the dot prototype. And this is a complicated concept, but it's actually not really that hard. Um, so what it's going to be is when you guys see a Pac-Man game, are there, is there just one dot or are there lots and lots and lots of dots? Can somebody tell me if there's lots of dots or only a few dots in a Pac-Man game? Peter, can I just ask a question? Sure. Um, my daughter, Olivia, we just can't see the Pac-Man screen. Where do we hit to make sure we're seeing what the action is? Okay. So... Uh, this should be, there's a more, uh, you can't see the Pac-Man screen at all? Oh. No, their Zoom, the Zoom video is covering it, I think. They just have to minimize oh. the Zoom video gallery on the top right. So, the, oh, there we go. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. So, there, is, is that a little bit better? Cool. Yeah. Picture, whoops. It was a picture of all the Zoom um, faces that was covering it. So, thank you. Oh. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. I'll... Yeah, it was you see the... on our end. Okay, got it. That's great. So we're going to create this dot prototype. And this is like a, this is a complicated um, concept, but it's actually pretty easy. It's basically saying, so var dot, we know what a dot is, right? A dot is um, a Pac-Man dot, right? And now what we've done is we've created this function, which is just basically the dot. And inside it, we're going to put the dots in different places. So we're going to say this, and this is the dot, dot x, and x is the x coordinate, which is the left to right coordinate. And we're going to make it a random position between 0 and 400. And what is this basically saying is we're going to create a dot, and the dot is going to be somewhere random on the screen. It could be anywhere from 0 to 400, anywhere from the left side to the right side. And we're also going to go this dot y equals random 0, 400, um, which is now going to be anywhere up to down. So we'll create a dot that's going to appear anywhere on the screen. And this uh, next one, this dot color, um, I think is going to just create a random color, uh, 0, 400. We'll see what happens when that shows up. 
and this dot size is going to be the size of the dot. So we're now going to create a dot that's going to be 10 in size. And now that we have this dot function, and the dot has basically four different attributes. It has a left to right position, an up to down position, a color, and a size. And, and this is almost like if you were putting on your clothes uh, in the morning, you would have like this dot underwear, this dot t-shirt, this dot pants, this dot socks, right? Like the outfit is like the dot. And these four things are all the things that go into the outfit. In this case, the dot is a dot. And the things that go in is where is it positioned on the screen up to down, top to bottom, what color is it, and what size is it? Uh, the next thing that we're going to create is a make dot function. And this function is going to, um, so we're going to go var make dot uh, equals function. And you can see some of the time I'm doing pseudocode and some of the time I'm doing type what you see because some of the stuff I know really well and some of the stuff I have to figure out. Um, so if eat dot length dot length um, is less than one, oop, I forgot my brackets over here. Um, if eat dot length is less than one, and I think it's going to say eat is not defined. So let's just say var eat equals one. Actually, I think I'm just going over here and do all the variables over here so I can see what it is. Oh, there's a lot of variables over here. So I'm going to do these like super quick. Uh, we have chomp speed. We have pack mouth. We have pack mouth close. Um, we're, we're going to have an is up press, is down press. We're going to have a speed and blank array as eats. So that I think is going to be like this. Um, I'm going to break it down again so I can get the stuff over here. Yeah, eat. And this is an array. Uh, an array is literally just a box of things. So imagine you had a whole bunch of tennis balls and you put the tennis balls in a box. That would like be an array, right? It's basically a box of stuff. And when we start with a blank array, we're basically starting with an empty box. But then every time the Pac-Man eats a dot, uh, that array is going to grow. We're basically going to put the, 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 the score or the dot into the box so we can remember that the Pac-Man is in the box. So let's go back to this um, eat dot length over here is less than one. And I'm gonna actually break it down again just so we can go a little bit faster so we can finally get to some fun stuff at the end because I'm gonna try and get this done in. Um... So then there's eat dot push and push is, um, push is literally put something in the box. So when we say eat dot push, what we're saying is we have this box called eat, right? This box is the, num the, the, the number of dots we've eaten. And we're going to put a new dot into that box. So now there's like another dot to eat. Um, and then that's that. And then uh, we're going to go for uh, var i equals zero, semicolon i is less than eat dot length. Um, and I do remember there's a question to do a Harry Potter something. So maybe we'll do something a Harry Potter really quickly um, at the end after our questions um, because someone asked for it. And so I want to make sure that we can actually do it. So var i equals zero. This is just a counter for how many dots we have. Eat dot length is how many dots are in the box. So right now, because we're at the very beginning, eat dot length is actually zero because there are no dots in the box. Um, but soon enough, we're going to have dots in the box. And when we do, we're going to want to count through all the dots. Now the dots are going to be, um, it looks like the dots are going to be white because this is a color for white. And then we're going to create an ellipse, which is eat I, and that means which, which number dot is in the box. So I right now, there's no eyes, but eventually there's going to be zero eyes or one eyes or two eyes. Um, and control. I'm going to see manage participants. I'm going to mute all for now um, because there seems to be some background noise. Um, okay, so eat dot i uh, dot x, which is basically the, the left to right uh, where the dot is left to right. And then there's over here dot y, which is where it is um, up to down. And then actually I'm going to press focus over here so I can, oops, remove focus. That, uh, I'm going to press focus of this one 
So I can see kind of what I'm working on. And I was over here. And then if I just go down here. So I just want to put where I'm typing near the focus, right? What I'm typing is over here. And therefore, I just need to be able to see it. And then comma x comma y uh, is less than 40. Um, then uh, eat i equals new dot. That means that if we have less than 40 dots, we're actually going to create a new Pac-Man dot. Um, and we're not going to play sound right now because we're not going to do the sound piece, um, but we will eventually do it. And what is this telling me? Missing a semicolon. If uh, we have this ellipse, ooh, I totally missed up where I was in the, the typing. And this is something that happens. So we're going to go, this is the size of the bot of the, the dot and ei um, dot size. Size. Okay. Um, right. Oh, because we're creating a, a, a dot that's going to be the size of the dot big, which totally makes sense. So now if uh, distance eat i dot x uh, eat i dot y, that means if the distance from the dot to the Pac Man is less than 40, then we're going to eat the dot and increase the score. So this piece over here is actually what keeps track of the score. And it is saying X and Y are not defined. Do we have to define X? Yeah, so we have to define X at the very top. So we're going to go var X equals 200, uh, var Y equals 200. And these are actually not really good names. I'm going to actually um, sort of Pac-Man X. I'm going to call this Pac-Man X because it's really where the Pac-Man is. And this is going to be Pac-Man uh, Y. Uh, and so over here, we're actually going to have over here. So this, this is, this is the, 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 the most interesting part almost of this project, um, which is, and I keep writing Pac-Man with an X. And so I keep having to, to shift it around. This basically says that this line over here, right over here, if the distance between the, the dot and the Pac-Man is less than 40, then uh, we're going to say the dot has been eaten. And so what's happening over here? Pac-Man Y is not defined. So we have to go back here. Oh, again, I typed it wrong over here. Oh, wait. So we go down, and this says the score is not defined. So again, we have to put in the score. And this happens a lot when you're creating a more complicated project where you just forget to put in the variables. And um, so all these variables, if, if, you're, if you're confused about what all these variables, imagine that each variable is like a bowl of cookies and it's a different type of cookie. So this is like the chocolate chip cookie and this is the oatmeal cookie and this is the peanut butter cookie and this is the oatmeal raisin cookie and this is the vanilla cookie and, and this is the candy cane cookie. And there's a lot of cookies. Um, and this is like the, the fruit cookie. Um, okay, so. Uh, we're, we're over here, we created the dot, and now we're, um, we've actually made the dot, um, and, uh, and now we want to create a move function that changes the x and y values when the direction keys are pressed or released. So once we do this function, we'll actually be able to move the Pac-Man around, which I think will be really fun. So let's try and see if we can get that done. And I'm just gonna break it down so that uh, we can go just a little bit faster. And um, so var loop Pac-Man, basically this is the name we're using to um, function uh, to move the Pac-Man. And what we're saying is if, um, and this is gonna be Pac-Man Y um, is less than zero, uh, then, um, Pac-Man, oops, Pac-Man Y is equal to 400. So what this is saying is if we loop the Pac-Man all the way to, to one side of the screen, we're actually going to move it to the other side of the screen. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other direction. Um, so we're saying over here, if Pac-Man, and I promise we'll, we're about to get a moving Pac-Man, which is, I think is going to be really exciting. So we're going to say if Pac-Man over here 
is um, is on the other side of the screen. We're going to move it to the left side of the screen. And then we're going to um, take all of this and just do the same thing with X. So we make sure that it's both up to down and left to right. And we just have to take this command over here, X. I'm looking at the time. I know it's 1023. So we have two minutes. I have two minutes to get a moving Pac-Man. This is going to be super interesting. Um, so, so here we have this Pac-Man thing that moves around and uh, this loops the Pac-Man. Um, and then we're going to actually have to create um, our, our variables to move the keyboard. And um, I might have to cheat a little bit. I know, I'm just gonna copy and paste these because I don't have time to type. Um, so these are now all our variables. Um, and we have all our variables. And now we, we did this, we don't need a sound. We're not gonna do the score right now. Uh, we create a function that loops the screen. This, I think, is going to be our draw function. Um, oh, this is another one. Let's see. Okay, so this one is, it's a duplicate. Okay, so we're not going to do that. Call all the necessary functions. And um, so this is, this is fun. So, so the draw function, when you're creating a complicated project, you basically have to call all the functions that you have. So you're going to have this move Pac-Man function. Uh, man, uh, like that. Then there's the Pac-Man chomp function. Um, and then there's the make dot function. Um, and then there's this play score function, but which we haven't written. But what we're going to do is we're going to put this in like this, and then we're going to um, uh, comment it out. And then we have to loop Pac-Man function. Um, okay, so. Um, uh, and then we have to do a key press function to, to check if the direction keys are pressed. Um, so for this one, and that actually is gonna be our time for right now uh, before we ask for questions. So we have 20 more minutes um, and we've created a Pac-Man and we've created all this stuff around the Pac-Man. And I promise that we're gonna try and get the Pac-Man to move. We haven't gotten that yet. Um, so first of all, is this good? Do you like seeing like an advanced project get put together or is, or is that too much? Um, can someone either chat me and tell me? Uh, oh, it's good. It's a lot. So Ruchi says it's a lot. Yeah, it's good. So Ruchi says it's a lot, but some of the people think that it's really good and it's uh, helping to put it all together. So that part is, uh, is okay. Um, I want to open it up for questions now. So what questions do people have about Hatch, about this project, about Pac-Man Chomp, about anything? Um, if you want to uh, unmute yourself or if you want to type it into the chat box, what does var mean? That's a really good question. So var m means that you're creating a variable. It's like just the, the number of, um, of, of uh, cookies in the box, basically. So I'm trying to think if I can open up another project to kind of show you what var means. So if we go app hatch.coding.join, uh, I'm gonna to go to projects and I'm gonna find a way, like there's gotta be, a, there's, there's gonna be a project that I can show you that shows, okay. So for many colored circles, I can show you what var does with many colored circles. So I'm just gonna break it down so we can see it. And I'm gonna copy and paste. Um, and over here, we have this number over here so we're gonna create a var num uh, circles equals 400, right? So we've created, again, imagine like a box of cookies. And over here, instead of 400, we're actually gonna say number of circles, right? So number of circles we know over here is equal to 400 because we've defined it. But what if we change this? What if we say, um, okay, um, yeah, uh, and Aruda, give me a number, give me a number between one and 20 in the chat, in the chat box. 110. So if we go 100 and, oh, if we go two, we only get two circles. And if we go 20, we get 20 circles. And if we go 110, we get 110 circles. And if we go 800, we get a lot of circles. And if we go five, 
we get only a few circles. And this is kind of what the var does. It picks a number of cookies to put 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 in the box. Oh, he wanted 10. So let's let's do 10 over here. And here we have 10 circles. Uh, and Aruda, do you understand what a, a variable is now? Can you say yes in the chat box? If yes, perfect. Okay. So that definitely helped with, with that one. Um, is there anyone else? What about 255? Okay, let's try that. Let's see what we get when we have 255. We get a, we get a whole bunch of uh, circles because we're just putting more and more circles. And in fact, if you want to make this like really, really fun, so I'm going to put over here uh, a function var uh, draw circles uh, equals function uh, like this. And um, I'm going to say this. So now we have this circle over here that actually draws the function. And if we have var draw equals function, uh, equals function, and now we're going to actually draw the circles. Uh, and then we go like this. Now it totally makes all the circles like um, in, uh, like it, it, it jumbles the circles. But what we can actually do is we can say that it's just two circles. You can see that it, it's going to draw the circles. And then if we create a background in the back so that it clears the background every time, um, then what we're going to see is now we have these circles popping all over the place, right? Um, and then what we can actually do is we could say uh, num circles equals uh, e equals num circles. Um, oops, it's got to be uh, plus one. And now it's going to be really interesting because now it's going to fill up over time. Do you see how we're just drawing more and more circles, and then it gets really, really um, full of circles. And then if we say if um, num circles. Uh, if num circles is greater than, let's say, uh, 200, um, then uh, num circles uh, equals one. So now what's going to happen is going to fill it up with up to 200 circles, and then it's going to start all over. Do you see that? Does, is that helpful? Is that really cool? Um, awesome. Yeah, so that means the number of circles grows by one every time because what we're, we're saying is every time we do draw circles, we're increasing num circles by one, and now we get this really, really cool effect. And um, I think if we actually say uh, there's this thing called frame rate equals one, uh, and I didn't do that properly. It's frame rate. Um, so I'm going to actually look up... Uh, frame rate uh, processing. And I'm going to see if uh, frame rate open bracket, close bracket. So I think if we go over here, uh, frame rate open bracket, close bracket. Uh, so this is, so we can actually slow it down with frame rate. So now we can almost see it like it's now growing over time, right? And so now it's not like a full jumble and it's like weird for us to see. But um, it's actually showing us that it can grow over time. And now we can do things like we can just make this five. And now it's going to grow a little bit faster. We can see it grow, but it's not going to take that long because it's only going up to 200. And then it's going to start again. And actually, that's probably a little bit too much. So let's just start with 100. So now it's going to go up to 100. And when it gets up to 100, you're going to see it go back down to the bottom. Um, it's drawing it, it's drawing it, it's drawing it, and then it starts over again from the beginning. So now it like, kind of loops through, and now we have this like for many colored circles variation, which is like really fun and it's it's a little bit more animated. Um, but it's like three different pieces, right? The first piece is the variables, the second piece is to draw the circle, and the third piece is is to like make it all come together. So. Um, I actually like this project. I'm going to copy it and maybe we'll make a new project called um, For Many Colored Circles Plus because I think this is like a, a fun project that I put together. Um, oh, Austin. So we want it even slower. So let's do it slower. Let's do it even. No, that's probably too slow. How's that? Is that good? 
Is that a good slogan? From Bailey everyone, that, that's good. Awesome. Um, so all this came about because someone asked me a question about variable and I picked a project and I started to play with it. And this is kind of like the cool thing that you can do with Hatch is you can, um, you can kind of play with stuff and, and make it cool. Um, does anybody have another qu question about Hatch, about how to do something uh, on or with Hatch? Uh, no, that's a, that is a no. Um, okay, uh, so, so that's good. Um, do you guys want to uh, like pull your parents back in and ask them if they have any questions about Hatch? Because I'm happy to answer questions. We're here and I just want to make sure you guys get the most you, you can out of, uh, out, out of Hatch. Yes, I hear a question coming. My parents don't have a question. That's awesome. Um, so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to project um, I'm finished. So I'm going to say uh, I'm finished this project um, and go back to the project library. There's a question for a Harry Potter, Harry Potter project. Um, does anybody have any specific Harry Potter project that they want to do? Um, if not, I'll just go pick one of the Harry, project, Harry Potter projects. Um, I can do Golden Snitch or Kidditch project. Why is there only at six? And this is two. This is draw the golden. Um, we don't have any questions right now. Just enjoying seeing the code come together. Awesome. That is fantastic. So, guys, um, Golden Snitch. Let's do Golden Snitch and let's make the challenges happen. So draw the program that creates the golden snitch. Um, so we're going to, uh, I'm just gonna break it down so that we can actually do some more playing with it instead of typing. Um, so this is the middle of the ball. And here we have a fill which picks the color. The stroke basically picks uh, the color of the outside of the ball. That's why the outside of this is uh, golden. The ellipse basically draws the outside circle and a bezier curve is like a curve. So the reason why we can draw this curve like this um, is because we're using this Bezier curve and it's super complicated. Um, and I don't know if there's a really good way of explaining how the Bezier curve picks points exactly, but, but basically you're drawing a, uh, w without going to a 10 minute explanation. And I wanna get into the challenges and just do something fun. So now there's the draw wings function. Again, we're just gonna break it down so we can draw it and after we draw it, we can have fun with it. Um, and uh, so now we have the wings and the wings are just literally triangles and quads. It's everything we did yesterday with uh, the origami cat, just in different pieces. So we kind of have the golden snitch here and now we have challenges. So change the background color. Um, that's pretty easy. Just at the very top, we're just gonna go background and I'm just gonna, let's say we pick a, um, like a gray type color and just a shortcut for you guys. If you guys are picking a color that's between black and white, that it doesn't have any difference between the amount of red, green, and blue, you don't have to type in 180 comma 180 comma 180. You can literally just type a single number 180 and it basically um, gives the same gray. And afterwards we'll do the lightsaber one. That's a good idea. So we've changed the background color. I'm gonna say that we've completed that have the snitch move with the user's mouse. Okay, so this is going to be, um, how are we gonna do this? That means that every time, uh, every time uh, any of the shapes move, it has to move with the mouse. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna say plus mouse X, and I'm gonna take this plus mouse X with a space, and I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna copy it, everywhere there is a, um, an X position. So I know that there's an X position over here. Uh, I know that there's an X position with every uh, other uh, triangle position. And then I know that there's an X position with every single uh, other position. I'm just gonna like line this up so you can see it a little bit. Um, and then the quads are the same thing. So I'm gonna say quads over here, quads over here, 
but the line is between two dots. So I have to do that and over here and over here, we're putting in all these mouse X's anywhere that there's an X position, we're gonna put the mouse X um, and uh, there we go, mouse X position and then the quad, we're just gonna put it over here and 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 over here. And now moment of truth, we're gonna see if I got it right. Um, uh, oh, far drawing. So the problem now is for it to move with the mouse, we have to have a far draw equals function because we have to animate the screen. Anytime we want something to move with the mouse, we have to animate the screen, which means that we have to take this background color and we have to put the background color inside the draw function because otherwise uh, we're gonna get that thing where it draws over it. And we ha actually have to take the drawing of the, the um, middle and the screen and we have to move it to the inside. So now that we do this and we go here, we can actually move this left and right. And guess what's not moving? What's not moving is the, uh, the Bezier curve is not moving because the Bezier curve um, uh, doesn't have any mouse X's in it. So I don't know if in over here, special shapes, do we have a Bezier curve in here yet? We do. So we can do some programmatic region. We can see the anchor is the X and the Y, and the anchor two is the X two and the, and the Y two. Um, so we might have to do it every, uh, all four of these, we might actually have to do it. So if we go over here, we might actually have to put our, um, our, our plus mouse X and mouse Y in to every part of the Bezier curve as well. Um, and basically what we're doing is, is anywhere that it's showing a position. So now we can look at that. We can stretch the, uh, we can stretch this, which is kind of like fun. Um, and uh, we're gonna I also use the anchor point over here, right? And now it's stretching both parts of it, um, but we actually have to also do the, the, the inner points as well to make it work because it looks like with the Bezier curve, everything is connected to the um, mouse. And now look at that, our, uh, our Bezier moves with the snitch. And one last thing I would notice is it's not really centered on top of the snitch, right? So that's a little bit of uh, a problem because um, we actually want that to happen. So what I would actually do is I'm going to create var, uh, var, uh, I'm going to say golden X, which is the X position, right? I'm going to say golden X position equals mouse X uh, minus, let's say a hundred, right? So this is the mouse X. We want to move it over. It might even be like 200, right? So, and now what we actually want to do is we're going to take this and we're going to use a find and replace because we have way too many mouse X's in there. So I hope somewhere here, if I go control H, I can search for mouse X. Um, nope, I need, uh, I need a, a mouse X and replace it with golden position and we replace all. And now it totally doesn't work. Oh, because this is not golden position. This is supposed to be mouse X. And now does it work? Let's see. Um, uh, hmm. uh, oh, well, that's because right now golden X position is only defined once. It's actually defined at the top. We also want to take this, and every time we draw this, we actually want to reconfigure where the mouse position is. And now we have the mouse position, but the problem is we still haven't solved it. It's not on top of where the mouse is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the mouse X and we're going to minus 200. And now, now we have it moving on the X axis. And if we wanted to do the same thing with the Y axis, we would basically just do the same thing, but Every time you see a number over here that doesn't have, we'd actually have to do a golden Y position as well. And then we can move it um, uh, with, the, with the, we can move it up and down as well. Um, 
Does that make sense to everybody? Um, is this is this helpful? Was it useful? Someone say yes. Awesome. Um, okay, so we have yes. Could this go on YouTube so we can watch again later to see the coding again? Absolutely. We are recording this, and uh, I promise sometime in the next, um, sometime today, we're going to put both of the yesterday video and today's video up on YouTube so that you guys can uh, can play around with it. Um, good. So why don't we leave on a high note? I think we did some awesome projects. I think we got some really exciting stuff. And uh, the channel name is going to be Hatch Canada. We'll send an email to everybody so they can watch these videos. And tomorrow, I think what we'll do is we'll do the second half of Pac-Man and we'll do lightsaber. Um, and uh, we might answer another question, do another short one as well. Um, so everybody, thank you so much for, um, for, uh, for uh, joining the, uh, the, the Learn to Code webinar. I hope you guys learned a bunch. And, um, and I'll take your request and we'll do like three projects uh, per day. And if there are any questions about Hatch, I'm happy to do that. Um, and, and if not, we'll wrap this up and we will, um, we'll stop the share and uh, we'll go forward. Okay, thanks everybody, see you tomorrow. Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.